Hello everyone and welcome. This video is really a follow-up of my last video which was about bearing numbers and how they relate to the kind of bearings that you buy. In this video I'm going to talk about what you should go and buy. Um, really it's down to the end user what they buy um, but I will sort of talk about some of the pitfalls and things that go with it. Right, so what to consider when buying a bearing? Well, I guess the primary differentiator would be price. The next one will be um, performance and uh, the final bit is availability. So assuming you can get the bearings in the correct size you want, in the case of my example, I'm gonna use 6806 bearings. So they're P BB30, PF30, 30 millimeter ID, 42 millimeter OD and seven millimeters thick. It's a popular bearing. The first thing to consider, um, if you park price to one side, is what you're going to use it for. So if you're going to be using it in a dirty, dusty environment, exposed to water, then you need to look at the seals. So seal-wise, you could have no seals, and I would certainly strongly advise you don't go for that option, unless it's in a pedal. Um, or you could have non-contact seals, like this Enduro bearing. Um, or you can have contacting seals like this SKF bearing. The SKF bearing with the contact seals has significantly more friction than this non-contacting bearing. In fact, most of the bearing friction actually comes from the seals. The next thing to consider is the materials the bearings are manufactured from. So this is Enduro bearing, it costs 40 euros. Um, this is an NTN bearing, it costs 12 euros. So there's a price differential there of almost four times. The Enduro bearing is ceramic, so the balls in there are ceramic. In this NTM bearing, the balls are steel, hardened steel. Ultimately, if you want out and out performance, most of the time people will tell you to go towards ceramic bearings and they would be right. But there is um, a load of marketing blurbage associated with that. And the fact of the matter is, very few bearing companies actually make standard bearings with non-contact seals. They're all listed in the, the NTN book or the NSK book or the uh, Schaeffler book. They're all in there, but you can't actually get hold of them. Given that, um, this NTN bearing almost has, in fact, in my hand, this one feels smoother and less frictiony than this Enduro bearing, despite the price differential. So. All these videos on YouTube where they spin cranks or spin wheels and um, say, oh, the ceramic bearing is miles better. They probably use this, oh, well, a ceramic bearing against a contacting rubber sealed bearing. Um, so that's worthy of note. As far as brands go, if I talk about the big players first of all, so... FAG, I rate their bearings very highly, but again, if you can get them in size, good. If you can't, which is a problem in the UK, then um, you have to move on to something else. SKF, the problem with SKF bearings in a small size, uh, and this is my opinion more than anything else, is the cage inside which holds the balls in, balls in position. On an SKF bearing, they are plastic, or TN9, which is a polyamide um, product. They don't last that long, um, so you need to be aware of that. Enduro, Enduro bearings are predominantly focused on the bicycle industry. I don't really rate their bearings that well because I've taken this one out of the packet and I can feel it clicking and that's not uncommon. So um, I don't really rate them that highly. The other thing to note is they come with C3 clearance as standard, so the gap between the balls and the inner and outer race is much bigger than a standard bearing, and that sort of you know, leads itself to um, problems later on down the line. As you pedal away, you find that if you haven't got the click straight away, it starts to click after a while. Um, NSK bearings, no problem, but again, sizing and seals are uh, a bit of an issue because you, I just can't get hold of them. Another one, Koyo, I would avoid this brand because I don't know what they make their bearings out of but they never seem to last very long so um, I, I don't bother with them. NTN, now I rate NTN very highly especially in the UK, their customer service is, is excellent so 
I, I only buy bearings, you know, three or four at a time. Uh, and I gave them a call and, um, you know, they were extremely helpful with tolerances, fits and that kind of thing. Additionally, the, I, I don't think I've ever had an NTN bearing that came out of the box that uh, had any faults with it. So, out of preference, I usually use NTN. The final aspect of all of this is um, fit. Now, the fit is dependent on the class of bearing that you get. One of the big problems since they invented bottom brackets with press fit bearings is creak. Now, creak is usually a result of poor manufacturing tolerances either from the frame manufacturer or the bearing manufacturer. It's very, very easy and cheap to change the bearings to quality bearings uh, and avoid that scenario. So I've seen lots of people with um, very expensive bike frames where they fit cheap, no-name branded uh, bearings from eBay and uh, they get creaked. So there's another thing that I would stay clear of. Right, well, I hope you enjoyed this video. It was a bit short, this one, compared to my usual ones. Um, if you uh, have any questions, comments, uh, please use the uh, comments box below. Uh, if you enjoyed it, please give me a thumbs up, and uh, I look forward to seeing you next time. Thank you.